Hello future game makers and welcome to a second NDS programming tutorial and as I mentioned last time we are going to go straight into making a NDS um, your own project folder setup whatever anyways fairly simple I apologize for last time being a little bit winded there's a lot to cover this time hopefully will be a shorter video but the only way that's going to happen is if we get started right away. Let's get into it. So we're going to go down here, go into our Dev Kit Pro folder right here. And we want to make a new folder for our project. Whether you want to make a folder for all your projects and then a folder for your new projects, go ahead. I first started in the habit of going into the examples and making new projects in there. But you can do it anywhere as long as you avoid the cursed space bar. That's the only thing I need to tell you. So we're going to make a new project folder and we're just going to call it blah. Because why not? Alright, so that's our project folder. And to set things up, we're going to use a handy dandy little template that was made in here. And the first thing you're going to want to decide is whether or not you want to make a whether or not you know C++ or want to do your entire code in C. Both are feasible. Both are very easy. However, why don't we just dig through what the C template looks like and then I'll show you how to make the C++ template and then we'll go on to making our actual project. So, first we go to the C template and you'll notice there are four folders and four files. Data folder. I don't know what it's for. Don't ask me. Um, just know that it exists um, for whatever. Uh, Night Fox library. Um, this is obviously the library file. It's a .a file. You've got your includes all in here. Um, that's really nice because you just include this one, which includes the rest. And then you all, and then you never get compile errors for something not being defined or whatever. So that's all there. Nitro files. This is a file system within your .nds executable file. Kinda cool. Because this means you can just have one NDS file and all your media, your videos, your music, your pictures, anything that you'd be loaded using like a file system structure, it's all in here. And you'll start and hopefully you're starting to see exactly how coding like this relates to other types of coding with computers and file systems and installs and stuff yeah we do everything using this nitro files folder you can actually make folders inside of here say if you want to make a new folder and call it backgrounds and then put stuff inside of it you can um, I'm just going to delete this though because there's no reason I'm having it there in my template. But anyways, you can do that. I'm just going to skip over the source for now. That's where all your code is going to go. I'll go into it in a little bit. Then you have your super duper handy batch files, the clean batch file, the compiled batch file. I normally just use a compile. I never clean things because I always worry I'm going to delete something I don't want. Your icon.bmp. Um, Notice the dimensions are 32 by 32. Um, yeah, down here, 32 by 32. That's what it looks like. DS Homebrew. And this is that little icon that you would see when you'd normally load like a NDS game from like that menu screen. This is that little like game icon. Um, you can edit this icon for your personal projects. Um, some hardware game loaders will allow you to see them, some do not. I'm actually doing a little research on that. Well, I haven't started yet. Too lazy. Anyways, and this is your make file. Um, later you'll be editing or replacing this make file to allow it to add more and more features. But for now, um, what you might want to do is copy the the NF, the the 
nitro file system you know that folder I showed you last lesson where that one make file is you might want to just copy that over in here right away and now for source and I believe I have not edited this one yet you'll notice that I'm just gonna open this up in Roblox because I feel like it and you will see this giant header at the beginning it's interesting but if you want you can just delete it uh, you don't need to follow this whole template setup this whole comment system you can you can rearrange this however you want to design what you want to see when you create a new project for your main file at least here's your main um, and hey why don't we go over what some of these functions do in our main code first of all you want to include stdio.h um, standard c console input output nds.h is libnds you can google what all those functions are you can technically make games with that library but nightfox makes things a little easier and you include that right here and that's all he's got set up for you right now console demo in it I think demo is actually a default mode in it um, this sets up the Nintendo DS background system you'll learn more about that later it sets it up to make the background system act like uh, like a DOS console type thing where it's just like your text games and whatever and you use I always say console but you say console whatever the, con the console clear that's right here that just erases all the text for you very handy um, it just erases everything right away the set brightness I'm still doing research on it um, this like sets up like the brightness settings um, with a fade to black fade to white type thing I am still trying to figure out if this overwrites like your brightness setup on like a DS light or something if it does then you may want to stay away from it if but if it doesn't then this can be really useful for doing some cool effects I'm still researching that though. My apologies. And printing. Print to the screen. You will notice that whenever you are printing, normally you have printf well, in C. Well, this time you have to put that little I in front for integer. The Nintendo DS does not have floats or doubles. You cannot use those at all. You can use integers, chars. Um, short ints, short unsigned ints, there's a ton of different ones that you can use and it's very and the NDS library likes to abbreviate things like you have an unsigned 8-bit integer you just do unsigned A and stuff and you can set that to 255 something like that Anyways, ignore that because we don't want to do that. And then Watt. Oh, by the way, you can get rid of these comments if you don't like them. And now our while loop. This is just to make this loop infinitely to keep the game always running, even though it's not much of a game. It's just printing some of the screen and just keeping it there. And the function for that is this this and I apologize if you're hearing something in the background and that is our dog uh, yeah not sure if you guys can hear that but it's a little annoying anyways SWI um, not exactly sure what that stands for to be honest um, but then wait for V blank V blank is what I like to call the 
it's that little period between um, the screen displaying stuff when you like to update with the new information that goes on the screen without stuff being like tattered and torn and whatever. Um, basically it's a time when the NDS is not drawing to the screen um, but you can also and it just waits for the next one when you call this function so this is just waiting for the next frame over and over and over again to just let time pass is really what it's doing and you can and you can actually loop loop through this function using a for loop to create a time effects you have I believe 60 frames per second or maybe it's 59.94 not sure anyways you have you can use that to calculate like dramatic pauses or whatever you just loop through this function so it doubles as a pause thing and that can be kind of handy and then of course you return zero never you, you'll never hit this function but it's good to have since you're doing an int main you support the int argc argv and this is actually and this is actually for using the nitro file system they they want this supported and that's and the homebrew menu supports it that's why we use this setup and that's pretty much the C file so yeah I don't want to save the changes so now let me show you what I did in the C++ template you'll notice it looks exactly the same except for the source folder I renamed it to main.cpp and you'll notice that I've really 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 compressed things instead of the standard io.h I changed this to c standard io because I'm lazy like that but you can also use io stream that does work I have tested that there's the end nds.h and a flip you'll notice I got rid of a lot of comments just to make things clear to see and all the functions and code are the same so those are your templates let's get to actually making a project let's close this out and I am actually going to use the C++ template and I'm just gonna actually not that I'm gonna go inside and copy everything inside copy it I'm gonna go back to blah and just paste it off. There. Technically, this is all you need to start coding. Um, you have your source folder. You can edit this in any anything. Make sure you save it and you run compile, and you will get an NDS file. And just for proof of concept, I'm gonna do it. There. There's our NDS file with our typical hello world just like that pretty easy but not done yet we are going to go a little more in depth and yeah oh a new build folder just showed up um, yeah just let the compiler use that and you, the other things that show up are a .nds file and a .l file. .l file is used for building everything. Linking. You guys will eventually learn what all that means, but or maybe you already do. I'm not sure. Anyways, so this is our project. But the one thing that we're going to have issues with is debugging. Because debugging from a console window in the batch file not gonna be fun not gonna be fun so if you notice we had that programmers notepad thing opened with the dev kit pro examples so we're gonna make a programmers notepad project so let's do it I've got programmers notepad right here I'm gonna hit this 
close this out and I'm going to go to file new project and this is just going to be an empty project and we are going to give this the same name we gave the folder and now we're going to go find that folder it's under computer the C dev kit pro this will get a little bit repetitive so and make sure you just select the block folder not anything inside hit OK and now this is where the repetition starts first thing we need to do is we need to add magic folder which is just going to know which is just going to automatically know what everything inside of it is and here's the repetition we need to go find that same folder our project file was in again and this time the ordering is completely different there's blah right there hit next and now we get to enter the type of files we want to include separated by a semicolon so we want a dot c files of course dot c plus plus files and dot h files that's about it and just leave that that's normally set up properly and hit finish and there we go that is everything we need so there's our main that C file there's our project and we can go to tools.make and it says it's up to date Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Next time we will go into some more awesome stuff. I will be showing you how to make a text game. Yep. And we'll eventually expand on that to make it a full slideshow, sound effects, and everything. But just text game for next time. So see you guys then.